Okay, in this video, we're going to go over programming assignment 9 and 10. So we see here that uh, we're starting our own cloud computing company. And uh, we're going to keep track of the customers of their cloud and compute the customer bills. Okay. GMU Clouds Marketing forecasts the number of customers to be less than 1,000. So you can probably assume from this there's going to be a customer class and there's going to be an array of customers and it's going to be set to this maximum amount. Um, a customer is given a seven character application generated customer ID. So in other words, you need some sort of function to generate this ID. And the format is the string USR plus a four digit number that starts at 1000 and then counts up from that. So the first the first person created would be USR 1000, then USR 1001, etc. Okay. Additionally, the system must track the customer's name, phone number, email address, and if the customer has a corporate discount. Customers with corporate discounts receive 20% off their total bill. Okay. The customer phone number is validated as parentheses XXX parentheses space. Okay, so you're going to have a validation function you're going to have to write for the phone number. Okay, and the email address is also going to have a validation. You're going to have to check that there's only one at sign and one period. And the at sign has to appear before the period. And, well, you can read through all of the rules there. So you're going to have a fairly um, involved validation function for this email address. Okay. All right, now customers are going to have VMs, virtual machines, okay? So you're gonna have this customer object, but then you're also going to have these VM objects, all right? So this is a case of a composition and aggregation situation. Um, all VMs have a flat monthly rate of $20, okay? Which includes eight gig of memory and 20 gigs of storage. So these are some default things for a sort of a default VM. Additionally, the customer must customize the VM based on the customer's needs. The customer must choose from one of the following choices, web server, file server, or Bitcoin miner. So in other words, what we're probably going to have is we're probably going to have a super class called VM, and it might be abstract, okay, and it's going to have these values here, but then you're going to have um, subclasses of web server VM, file server VM, Bitcoin VM. Okay, and so the web server VM also, in addition to what was up here for just the regular VM, it's going to track additional memory, um, and that's basically all it's going to track, and then there's some stats on how much that costs, okay, and some upper limits that you can have. Okay, for the file server VM customization, in addition to the sort of basic things in the VM, you're going to choose a storage type, block storage or object storage, and you're going to choose the type of storage media, and then there's some costs associated with that and some maximums. Okay, and then for the Bitcoin one, you're going to select the number and brand of GPUs, and there are some costs and some upper limits for that. And then it says you're going to create a program that allows the user to enter in customers. Um, and it'll display, yeah, so then you need, after each customer is entered, print a well-formatted report displaying all customer details, the amount, of monthly fees incurred and the total amount of monthly fees incurred with the corporate discount. Then we're going to print a summary report, um, which has all of this stuff right here that they talk about. And uh, the last thing it says, management needs a printable roster that can be emailed to all staff. To create the printable roster, build a text file. So this is going to be the file input and output um unit that we're going to talk about 
containing a list of all customers and the total number of customers. For each customer, you must include two attributes, the customer's name and their ID number. Okay, and so let's see, they say pay careful attention to the requirements, including the relationships between objects. Think about what types of validations, okay. They also point out that you have to have appropriate constants, constructors, accessors, mutators, special purpose methods, including a two string method. You can't use parallel array arrays. Um, J option pane. Okay, so the rest is pretty much the same. So of course, assignment nine is the documentation exercise. Now remember, for number one, where you list and describe the purpose of each class, we're going to have a bunch of classes for this one, right? Because we're going to have a customer class. All right, if we go and look. Okay, we're going to have a customer class. We're probably going to have a VM class. I don't know if it's abstract or not, but it's going to be a, a VM super class. So we have customer, we got VM. Then we got web server VM, file server VM, and Bitcoin miner VM. So that already right there is five classes, okay? And then, of course, you'll have your implementation class. So there's going to be probably six classes that you're going to have to do for this programming assignment. Okay, and uh, yeah, so for number one, you're going to need to have six different classes there. For the data definition classes, again, you're going to have five classes there. You're going to have customer, you're going to have the sort of base VM class, and then you're going to have the three VM subclasses. So there'd be five of these. Okay. All right. So that's basically the assignment. Um, now I think what I'll do is I'll show you what it looks like when you run through it. So, okay, if I click on run here. All right, so here we have this menu, add a new customer, print summary report, generate roster, exit the program. All right, so I'm going to add a new customer. The customer's name, Bob Smith. Okay, the customer's phone number, and I think it, we have to, well, here, let me just try a invalid. Okay, so here's the format. Parentheses. All right, so let's go one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Okay, customer's email, Bob at Smith dot. Well, here let's put in a let's put in an invalid one. Smith dot Smith, or we'll do Smith at Smith. Bob at Smith at Smith. It says it's invalid, so. All right. Enter one if this customer gets a corporate discount or two if not. Uh, we'll say that they do get a corporate discount. All right, and so now it's asking them the type of server that they want. Do they want a web server, a file server, or a, a Bitcoin? Okay, so if we actually really quickly jump back here to the assignment, I think one thing that I forgot to point out is that each customer will only select a single VM, okay? So you're not going to have a situation where a customer has multiple VMs, all right? Obviously, that's not very realistic, but to keep the assignment simple, that's what we decided. So once we've prompted for all the customer information, we can immediately go to select uh, collecting the information on the VM. Okay, so let's just, we'll do a web server VM. Um, the amount of additional RAM that I'd like, I'll have 20. Oh, the RAM has to be a multiple of eight. Okay, so I'll do 16. All right, and so it prints out all this stuff. I've got Bob Smith, I've got user 1000, got the phone number, the email. Yes, he's getting the discount. He's got the web server VM, which by default comes with eight. I guess that's probably gigs of RAM, 20 gigs of storage. It has these monthly fees, it's got the additional RAM and the cost after the discount. So I guess this guy gets a 20% discount is $32, okay? And so now if I were to print a summary report, okay, you'll see that I've got one customer, the total amount of the fees are this, the average cost is this, the total amount of memory and disk are right here, number of GPUs and Bitcoin miners are zero. So let's go ahead and add another 
customer. All right, so we'll do this one as Fred Jones. Okay, and he's, his phone number can be that. All right, and he'll be Fred at Jones.com. Okay, and we'll say this guy doesn't get the corporate discount. And let's give this guy a, let's give him a Bitcoin VM. All right, so enter zero for NVIDIA GPU or one for AMD. Uh, we'll do an NVIDIA. And we'll say he has four GPUs. All right, so again, we get this message, Fred Jones. There's his user number. Notice that it automatically generated and incremented this. So he's user 1001. Phone number, email. He doesn't get the discount. The type of VM is a Bitcoin. Again, it's got the default 8 gigs of RAM and 20 gigs of storage. And then the monthly fees are calculated based on the fact that he's got these four additional uh, G NVIDIA GPUs. Okay, so now if we print the summary report, we can see that there are two customers. There are the total fees, the average cost, the total memory, the total disk, the total number of GPUs, and the total number of Bitcoin miners. Okay, and lastly, let's go ahead and generate the roster. So if I hit three here, okay. It didn't really seem to do anything, but if I actually go back into my JGrasp, go over here, I see that what happened is it outputted this roster right here. So if I click on this, you see I got Bob Jones in the username, Fred Jones in the username. Okay, so this is going to be the file output portion of the program. Okay, so that is basically the uh, assignment 910. Any comments or questions that you have, please post in the discussion boards.